So hi Thomas, how are you doing today? Hi Gitesh, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm I'm doing very well, thank you. So can you tell us something more about your company here on consulting? Yeah, yeah. Um, let me start with a little bit of a background. Um, uh, um, my background is uh, in uh, in operational excellence and uh, supply chain excellence, um, both from let's say a management consulting background and also from a, a corporate uh, type of, of, of background. Um, and last year, I opened my uh, the doors to, to my own consulting company, okay. uh, where we focus on those specific uh, areas: so operational excellence and supply chain excellence, and um, the everyday kind of improvements to operations. So we deliver management consulting services to help organizations improve their supply chain and operations, and be more efficient, basically, on an everyday in the everyday work they do. So I'm, I'm guessing you create a lot of PowerPoint presentations for that stuff, all this stuff, and maybe maybe some of that led to you create the Hiron add-in for PowerPoint. So can you tell us more? Exactly right, Peter. Exactly right. Uh, management consulting uh, has a good amount of uh, PowerPoint uh, um, uh, creation and development in it, and uh, no doubt about that. So for for consultants. Uh, PowerPoint is not just a tool for creating presentation, it's also a tool that is used for, for documentation purposes as well. Um, but as you know, PowerPoint is not really a tool that is uh, built uh, um, with the intention of being um, used for documentation. It's not, um, it's not Word, uh, it's pretty far away from Word when it comes to, to, to documentation uh, capabilities. So our add-in is is really there to bridge some of those shortcomings of PowerPoint when it comes to comes to, to documentation and when it comes to other things that um, is typically what we do on a daily basis in management consulting. So, so we will we will see some of those features, but it's really there to improve the everyday efficiency uh, when working with PowerPoint. And our starting point in that is, let's say, the everyday work for management consultants. But I'm sure that anyone using PowerPoint on a daily basis would find some use for this too. Awesome. So I actually gone and use your add-in and it's amazing and it's got some very, very cool features. Uh, so can I just request you to share your screen and take us through a sm quick look at your add-in? Absolutely. More than happy to do so. Uh, let's see if it comes around there. There we are. You see my screen okay? I do. I do. Thank you so much. Excellent. So here we, when you install that, and you will see it pop up as, as just one more tab next to all your other tabs. Uh, typically, if we go to the end of the list of tabs, um, if you, we just look at, let's say, the, the top level of orientation here, over to the left hand side, we have uh, two sections: one one called presentation and one called pro document properties. Both of those areas uh, uh, include functionalities that is related to the whole presentation as such. Um, so it's not specific for a shape or so that will become the later. Uh, over here we have um, uh, what, maybe one of the most annoying shortcomings in PowerPoint is the proofing language. Uh, so if you, if you uh, let's say, pull the slides together from many different sources as part of maybe your in corporate office role, uh, consolidating things and, and some users out there they use English others might use Swedish or Indian or, or whatever uh, and uh, when it all comes together into one uh, presentation it's just a headache to, to get all that proofing done with this you can just do that with with a, uh, one click of a button and all the shapes in the presentation will have the same proofing language Awesome. Another neat feature, I think, is uh, is what you have uh, with the agenda. We talk about, um, let's say, the table of content uh, that you have in, in Word. You don't have that really in PowerPoint in the same way. But here you can select one text box and you can click agenda and new agenda. And that will bring you then, let's say, one kind of slide for each agenda part. Uh, and if you want to update this in in any way, maybe you want to add another line, and you can just select the uh, text box again, and you can update the agenda, and you will see that you get another slide for 5B, and you have all the other slides there as well. So this is a kind of table of content uh, that lets you divide your presentation into sections, 
and makes it easy, easier for the audience to follow the presentation when you go through it. And it, it takes away all of that, you know, uh, slide work that is just... Now I have to go and update seven slides one more time because I made one little change to the agenda. But it's a time saver, I would say. I really like the fact that it's uh, automated, but only when you want it to be automated. So rather than uh, updating it automatically, it waits for instructions from you to go and update it and then does it. For the boss, exactly. Yes. yes. Um, I think the document properties is something that is, is really useful when you... Yeah, maybe I should mention before that you, you have a few other things that you would miss in, in, in PowerPoint Native. You can save selected slides, so you just pick the slides you want and you click save here and you get the presentation with only those slides. And you can do the same but just sending them, so that would be drafting an email in Outlook for you. True. Uh, and you can do the same two things also, but, but you just turn them into a PDF as well. And this is something that also saves time and you you tend to have a large presentation and you just want to send a few of those slides over to, to the client for review uh, and then you just use these feature and, uh, features and it saves you quite a bit of time. Document properties is just the, the, the correct way of, of um, uh, specifying what the presentation is about. Uh, rather than storing it in one million different folders uh, and the, the, let's say the folder location will tell you something about the content of the of the presentation. The right way to do it is to, to use the document properties for it. Uh, but the pro properties of a document is quite hidden away. So this is just a way of, um, of, let's say, bringing them more forward and make them uh, a part of everyday use. So you could, for example, here have different categories. Uh, if this is something totally unclassified that you can uh, uh, share with externals, or if it's an internal level of confidentiality, or if it's very classified. And you can define different type of subjects and, and other things that makes it easier, easier for you to find the correct content when you want to reuse something. Reusing is, of course, the ultimate time saver. If you can use something that you have already developed before, rather than creating it from scratch, it can save you a, a good amount of time. Absolutely. Uh, then we have a, a few sections here that is, is more about, let's say, uh, consolidating standard features of PowerPoint, but just making them readily available. So some of the things you will use all the time is, you know, something with text, uh, text boxes and paragraphs, just what kind of sizes and colors of text and, and uh, font size and, and things like that we want to, to use and make those options readily available. We have a few things related to shapes. Uh, also, how to arrange things, align top, bottom, middle, uh, turning things around, uh, flipping things. All, all things that you want to do with shapes uh, without clicking through too many menus. And I think that's where PowerPoint has kind of gone in the wrong direction. You need to, to do more clicking now than you used to uh, back in the days. So well, things are more hidden away under menus nowadays. And this is a way to bring them forward. So these are all standard things that we have kind of consolidated for convenience and purposes. Um, now we come to uh, uh, yeah. another section here with some special features more related to shapes. And so this is where we have, um, let me demonstrate some of those. So you can expand one shape uh, uh, to meet the other one. So if you uh, choose, choose first the, the shape that you want to alternate and then choose the kind of target shape. And then you can expand it so it kind of goes all the way over to the other one. And if they are partly overlapping, it behaves a little bit differently. So it only expands in one direction. And it doesn't matter where this kind of uh, slave shape is in comparison to the master one. It will, it, will, it will always kind of find its way over to the other one. It can be convenient if you want to, to you know, really align them next to each other and make them touch like that. And then, it's something I find myself using quite a bit. Awesome. Um, you have another neat feature also, uh, swapping positions. So you can just move them around. And it will drop them center to center. Um, you can also apply the same style to, 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 to both of them. So if you first select the one you want to change and then select your master, sorry, again, and apply styles, you will see them applying to both. Um, you can also, if you have two chevrons like this that are not the same angle, you can use the, 
adjust chaperones to make them exactly the same angle so they, they fit neatly into each other. Like that. Okay. Um, now we have the last one being the, the text boxes. Uh, you can split the text box into different parts and you can merge it back together like that. So something that can save time. If you have a text box like that and you just split it into the other individuals, then you can of course also turn those uh, text boxes into other shapes and start arranging them the way you want, for example. So it's a good way to kind of start things out. You start with a plain list of, of text lines and then you can turn them into individual uh, text boxes and into individual shapes and make it more visual. So, so the, that's uh, yeah. I think we'll be coming to that. So uh, that that's really awesome, and that's you're saving a lot of time with use these or using these options and uh, hours and hours of uh, time save where you can use uh, doing something else. So uh, you you said you're going to show me one of the features of the add-in, okay? Uh, which uh, is one of your favorites. Can, can can you tell us more about that one? Yeah, I guess you're talking about the the vectorizer. Is that right? Sure. Please go sure. ahead. Yeah. Uh, when we started developing this tool, we, we realized that one of the things that, that you that you need to have a kind of repository for it is the, the, the maps. When you want to visualize flows uh, of, um, of supply chains going in and out from different parts of the world, this is a really key thing. So you need to have a good repository of nice maps. And then uh, we want to make that available. But it turns out that you need to pay quite a bit of money for that, and you end up with you know uh, different fees uh, for for using them. And if you want to share them with others, which is also what we do want to do, then, then you then you get yourself into some trouble if you share things that are not let's say free to share. Uh, so what we came up with was actually a way of turning uh, one of these standard um, uh, map charts uh, into editable shapes. So as you, as you know, you can, you can create this directly from PowerPoint. It's a map chart. Uh, you have to go to insert, uh, insert chart, insert a map chart, and then, then you have one of these. But it doesn't allow you to you know play around with the individual countries. You cannot pull out Sweden from this map and do something with it. Yeah. Uh, so we, we invented this little feature called uh, vector chart. So when you click that, uh, you actually get the whole uh, chart uh, readily available as a, uh, as a vectorized maps. So from here, you have now individual shapes. So from here, you can, let's say, pull out Sweden of this. You can uh, see that it is a vectorized map. And if, if you if you want to go to, uh, uh, let's say, and, and add the points, you will see that yes. there are so many vector points on this one. Uh, and it allows you to, to do whatever you usually would do with a, any shape. You could, you know, give it some more flair with, uh, uh, yeah, basically anything you can do with a shape, you can do it with this. Uh, this True. That, that's, a, that's a good time saver and it's also actually a money saver because if you want to continuously keep buying different maps, it's, uh, it's going to cost you a bit of money. Absolutely. Um, I skipped now the whole kind of process uh, mapping thing. That is uh, is, is another uh, favorite thing that saves us quite a bit of, of time uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Um, but before coming back to that one, I, I just walk you through the last few few features here. So over here we have some what we call specials. Those are special shapes in a way. So we have Harvey balls. Uh, uh, in, in different standard features, you can also just put in whatever uh, percentage you want here, and that gives you the, that customized Harvey board. If you have already one selected from the previous version of the slide and you want to update that, you just keep it selected and it will, will bring a new one. Or if you want to add another one, you have to make sure you don't have it selected and you get a new one. Awesome. We have um, different ways of highlighting things. So we, we have some hand-drawn circles. It's just a kind of... Um, lively way of highlighting different parts of your slide. Um, you, they come in, in different colors here, green, red and yellow for different purposes then. You have stamps, if you want to put stamps on your slides, like a draft stamp, uh, you can do that in a standardized way. Um, you have another fun feature, I think, if you just go to the same text box, 
like this one. Maybe we have to make that a bit bigger and we make it bold. Uh, you can turn that into shapes. Um, so, so here you will see that each letter here has become a, a, a shape just like, like we saw before, uh, that you can turn into something else. Um, it's a kind of special feature that, that comes in handy from time to time, but it might not be something you use on, on an everyday basis. The last little cool thing I want to just show you briefly is the, the jigsaw puzzle. So you can, you can take any cute picture you have or even an ugly picture and you can turn that into a, to a jigsaw puzzle. Um, it's also one of those features that it's nice and, and, and cool, but you, you're not going to use it every day, right? But it's, it's just a fun thing. You have the same thing also uh, for, for, let's say, if you want to have just a, a jigsaw more as a, uh, individual shapes with text boxes, you have that as well. And that is something I use quite regularly to just demonstrate how things fit together, or maybe even more so how they don't fit together because something is broken in the organization. Yes. That's handy. Uh, last thing to just show you, you have uh, uh, some references over here. Uh, these will open up uh, um, different files that comes with the add-in. Uh, so, for example, you have um, uh, a presentation with pre-made maps. The vectorizer that I showed you is not going to work for every version of, of uh, PowerPoint. Uh, it requires the last version, I believe, and it requires even, let's say, uh, something that is not rolled out globally yet from Microsoft. So meanwhile, you, at least you have the references here sure. with, with um, many different parts of the world covered already. Uh, part of it is also your own kind of favorites. Uh, so, so this is a file that opens and lets you kind of collect your own favorite slides. Uh, so they are more readily available rather than for you to go and look through your archives for them. So that, that's handy, but it's just basically a, a, an empty presentation with a shortcut opening uh, function inside PowerPoint that makes that, that handy. Um, I, I think that's, that's, th that's a kind of high-level walkthrough uh, with a few examples and a few deep dives along the way. Um, uh, we skipped the process part. Should I go into that now, you think, Gitesh, or should I go elsewhere first? Sure. Uh, please go ahead and show us some process part, uh, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, so a few words about processes. It's kind of one, one of my favorite things. Um, and it's an absolute backbone when it comes to improving an organization. Uh, like Feichu, one of the, the, the uh, let's say, the grandfather of lean manufacturing uh, and, and continuous developments and, and improvements, if you like. Uh, phrased it so 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 greatly. Where there are no standards, there can be no kaizen or continuous improvement than in, in lean language, and that's absolutely true. We need the standards, and the standards are most of times expressed in the, in the shape of, of process maps. That's how how we kind of um, visualize and and document how things are done in an organization. And you could even say that. The process is, is for the organization, what memory is for the individual. Without that memory, we cannot really evolve, we cannot develop ourselves. So it's the absolute backbone of operational development, and that's why it's such, so frequently used, of course, in, in both in, organization, uh, in organizations, but also uh, by management consultants and trying to support organizations Absolutely. improving their, their business. Um, PowerPoint is not really a, a, an application meant for, for doing process development. There are specialized tools for that purpose. Uh, the shortcoming with those specialized tools is that uh, they are typically not uh, commonly used by our clients. Um, but PowerPoint is there for everyone to use. We have one billion users globally of PowerPoint, so that makes it a great tool for that purpose only, or for that reason only. Uh, and with a few extra, let's say, helping things in here, it, it, uh, it, it makes it quite a, a good tool. So first thing then, probably what you want to do is to put the swim lane uh, template in there. That's a click of a button and then you have that. And, and you would then, let's say, type in the, the, the activity owners for each uh, uh, swim lane. So maybe you have planning there. Just a simple kind of operational process map. You have uh, purchasing, uh, getting you some materials. You have uh, production, producing something. And you have maybe uh, uh, logistics done or shipping, uh, sending it to the customer. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, what the next thing you want to do is, of course, to put some uh, some uh, activities in there. So you could say a plan order. Uh, you could say uh, next one would be to purchase material, maybe. Uh, some material. Uh, maybe next one would be then to produce finished goods. Produce uh, finished goods. Uh, last one, top level process, obviously, for the example only would be to say then uh, ship to customer. Yes. <laughs> um, and now, now I already kind of made this a little bit ugly because you see these, these shapes are not centralized in their respective swing lanes. Uh, so this is a little bit too far down and this as well. And, uh, you know, it might look like nitty gritty details, but that is absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> it needs to look tidy and nice, but I don't want to fiddle around playing with that. But we have a, a line in lane, so you just uh, select the whole swim lane diagram and you click this button and you will see all these shapes, they come into exact central position in their respective swim lane. The other thing that might happen here is that you see that the dependencies between the swim lanes, uh, when you have mapped it out, actually indicates that you should, you should change places of, of swim lanes. And that is something that you would have great support to uh, doing in any proper process mapping tool. But of course, PowerPoint is not one of those tools. And it's a little bit cumbersome if you want to change places with purchasing and production. But with this lane up and lane down feature, it's done with a click of a button. So you can just move, move them around the way you want. Uh, and everything comes with both the shapes and the heading and, and everything else. Um, Maybe just the last thing to, to show on, on that subject as well is if you want to, you can of course also, let's say, connect things and show dependencies with with uh, with these type of, of connectors. Uh, the problem with uh, uh, these elbow connectors is, is the elbow, because that, this doesn't look right. Um, of course, if you have the dependency from this planning of the order, let's say, going into both the purchasing and the production, you don't want this elbow to be over here, you want it to be over here together with the other one, right? Um, but it, it's just not going to behave natively like that. But if I if I select this one first and then select my role model, uh, and then I go and click Align Vertical, they will align perfectly like that. Uh, so it saves you a lot of time actually, because getting these things right is really a headache. They, they end up being almost right, but they're not going to be perfectly right. And as soon as you move this thing, uh, this, uh, this shape a little bit, they end up being misaligned again. And then, then you could just select them again and go back and you have the perfect alignment. So those are the things that we have developed uh, specifically for doing process diagramming. And it saves us an ocean of time when we are busy doing that type of work. And it's also something that can be used by our clients and they don't need to, you know, have a delivery, delivery from us that, that it cannot be maintained long term, because that's the whole point with continuous development. It's not something that consultants should be doing. We can help you get started with a, with a good, let's say, foundation, uh, but then they need to be continuously maintained and should, of course, be done uh, in tools that allows that work to continue. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, how does one get this add-in and is it really free? Yeah, that's the that's the simple part actually. You just head over to uh, here on consulting.se and you will find this in the top right hand corner in the menu. You, you go over to, to, to that part of our website and it's available for direct download. The only thing that you need to do in that process is type in your email address and you need to check the box that you agree uh, uh, to the terms. Uh, it's just yeah. whatever five lines of terms and they essentially just say that you're not going to share this with anyone else. You're not going to make money from this product. If gotcha. anyone eventually will make money from this product, it should be us doing the development. Sure. Uh, but, but for the moment it's absolutely free and we don't have any plans uh, of, of uh, commercializing it at this point in time. If we ever do so, just to be honest about that as well, if we ever choose to start charging money for this product, it's going to be, you know, not at all one of those expensive tools out there. Uh, that is one of the drivers here as well, of course, that some of these tools out there are really expensive. You end up paying much more for that add-in than you actually pay for your whole office uh, package. 
if we ever start charging money for this, it will not cost you more than a gas station coffee packed water. Wonderful. So, uh, do you want to share any closing thoughts, Thomas, about uh, the Saturn? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I think it, this Saturn has been developed, let's say, with the everyday work of a management consultant or operational development type of, of position person in mind. That's where we're coming from. That's what we're doing. Uh, I'm sure there are things in here that can you, be used for many different purposes. Uh, we have uh, quite a bit of, of users already, and we had very positive feedback from from all of them. Well, yeah, we have we haven't had feedback from all of them, but all the feedback we had was very positive until now. Uh, we also have a long list of uh, of suggestions for further development, and we are eager to hear more of that coming from our users as well. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out of us uh, to us if you have some good ideas for further development. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? Yeah, one of the things with this that we also want to do is, of course, to to, to demonstrate, let's say, um, the, the 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 way we see for here on consulting to operate. Uh, we see a close collaboration between ourselves and our our clients. Uh, we are more than happy to share our methodologies and our tools that makes let's say, our life more productive uh, and, and can help others as well. Uh, and, and this is one way of demonstrating that we are super willing to share everything we're doing in an open and, and, and good way. Uh, and we are happy to also have uh, some, some positive side effects in our different projects coming out of that. And in this case, we are even sharing our, our tools with, um, with anyone out there that wants to use it. Uh, being a uh, hero consulting client or not, everyone is free to, to use this too. So, uh, uh, thank you, I, sir. I really hope that uh, that uh, that your followers will, will find it useful and uh, make good use of it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thomas. I really enjoyed uh, looking at this walkthrough with you, and I'm sure a lot of uh, viewers and readers will go and get a copy of your ad in, and it's going to be very, very useful to all of them. Thanks again and uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks for having me, Gitesh. My pleasure. Thank you. Explore more concepts at InDesign.com InDesign. Make better presentations. Fast.